Thank you everyone for coming. My name is George Mira. I'm customer success specialist for cross-domain automation in Cisco. And today I want to dive you into the world of NSO Web UI. So here on the screen, it's the only slide that you will see during the session. You can see a QR code with a lot of stuff that I cannot cover here from the ground, like the services creation. You will find here a step-by-step -step workbook with screenshots and uh, with all the sentences that you need to successfully download NSO, to install, create net sims, templates, services, everything, even role-based access control rules. So let's start with the web UI of NSO. Let me just put here a little bit so you can see well. Can you see, can you read well? OK. So default port of NSO Web UI is 8080. I will log in with the default admin and default username and password. And once you log in into the Web, U Web UI of NSO, you will see the commit manager, configuration editor too, because I'm showing you the lat lastest version of NSO, the version 602. And I will explain you the differences between the two configuration editors because we got like a big revamp. We have the device manager here, services manager. You have the package upgrades to help you upgrade your packages. Then we have the alarm manager, dashboard, high availability cluster to manage HA. We insights manager, this is a new module for you to monitoring the status of NSO. And you have the legacy configuration editor that we will see the differences as well because some of you may be using the version 5 of NSO because the version 6 just came out. So starting from the beginning, we go to the device manager where we can see all the devices that we have connected to NSO. Okay? Here we can see the IP addresses of the devices, the device name, the port, and we can try the connection to them. At the moment, the connection is not working and we can see. So if we click on this arrow, we can see a small message that NSO generates. Okay? If we scroll to the right, we can see that uh, we have here the alarms related to the devices. Okay? And let's start these devices. Okay? Let me put here more zoom. These devices are net sims. Because when you install NSO, NS and you will need to install NEDs. NEDs are like, uh, the best explanation is to, to give is like this mouse and this computer. They can only communicate because this computer has a driver to teach him how to access these mouse functions. The NEDs work the same way in, in NSO. They teach NSO how he can connect and access the functions of the devices that he is connecting. Okay? So the devices have just started. But before going into it, let me show you the alarm manager. You can navigate through all the menus of NSO by going here on the bottom. Or if you go to the start by clicking here on Cisco, you will be landing into the, into the first page. So here we can see that we have the iOS XR0 that uh, has a connection failure. And if we click, we already see some revamp of this configuration editor. To see all the operational data, or all the details of the alarm, we need to go to the operational data. And you will see here the alarm message. You see the severity when it happens. And the best part, if you scroll down, you can see the correlation that NSO does with this device and the hold alarms that he had. We can see that this device had some issues in the past as well. Like yesterday, while I was dry running for this session, the device was down as well. So the device should be up now. If I try to connect, we can see that the device is up. And now you tell me, OK, George, this is nice. We have buttons to click, but this is only five devices. What if we have 10, 15, 20? I want to check the connectivity. So here on the, on the left, you can click and you can select all the devices. And here on the top right, you have here a person running with all the actions that you have here on these buttons. So if you want to check the connectivity of all the devices, you can do it by just clicking on, on this action. What about the check sync? One of the most used functionalities here on NSO to check if the device configuration was not changed outside of the device, right? At the moment, we see everything in green. So let's, let me show you this working in just a minute. So in NetSIMS, we can connect to these virtual devices that we just created, OK? By typing the command net, net, NCS NetSIM. CLIC, and now the device name. 
And here we have the feel and look of a real device. So if I go into the configuration mode, I will, for example, create a loopback interface with one IP address. It can even give us the autocomplete with the tab. I will do 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, 255, 255, 255, just for test purpose. I will do commit. And if I do the show run, you can see that the configuration is here. So now I have done a configuration outside of NSO on this device, right? So if I go back to NSO, what is expected is that the device is out of sync. So we receive this red sign. So what we do with out of sync? We can see here the message again by clicking on the small arrow. And we see the, the message that we uh, were expecting one hash of the configuration, and we got another. How do we see what is the difference? Compare config. We click here on the small arrow, and we can easily see with these simple clicks what are the, the difference between NSO connection regarding no knowledge regarding the device and what he received from this check sync. Okay? And now we have two options. We can either sync to or sync from. If we sync to, this is very useful if you are, for example, in a troubleshooting session, you want to log in into the device, type some commands, but you want to roll back everything to the last known state of NSO. You click on Sync To, and what is on the left, it, was, it will be what will be sent to the device. Okay? If you click on Sync From, like we will do, we will pull all the configuration that is new on the device and save it on NSO and save this state. So now if we do the check sync, everything is fine. Okay? So let's, let's see if this turned to be real. We go into the device. To, we just, if we want to see the, the configuration of the device, we just click there. And now on this NSO 6, you can see already here some changes in the configuration editor, because now everything is separated. If I just want to see the configuration of the device, I can just navigate here. I go to the config, interface, and for example, in the interfaces, I only see the interfaces that are configured instead of the NSO 5 version of the configuration editor we had this view by default, where we would see e all the interface types that could be configured, right? So if I go again to the config, I want to see the loopback one. It has an IP address configured, and is the one that we did. So now let me show you how you can change configurations using the NSO Web UI. It's simple as this. You have a, an input, you change it. And a green bar will appear on the left side of the input. This means that we have a candidate configuration pending. Okay? So we can do as many configuration changes that we want in NSO, and that will only reflect on the device once we commit. I can even add, for example, here a description, web UI, demo. And you can see we are collecting these green bars. If I go here on the bo bottom bar, you can see that the commit manager now has an asterisk. This means there is something to commit. If I go to the commit manager, I can see here the, the configuration changes that will happen. So you can see what will be deleted from the device and what will be added with these changes. Okay? If you click on the native config, you will see the fast map of NSO in action, which will show you the commands that will be generated and sent to the device for this change to happen. So how do we do it? We commit. We click yes, we wait, and now the commit is successful, and we can see that a rollback file was created. Every time you commit something with NSO, a rollback file is created, so you can easily roll back the changes that you did. So like magic, let me show this in action, because if we commit and we don't show, you, you may be thinking that this did not happen, but it did. So I went to the device, and you can see that now we have here the description and we have the, IP, the new IP address. Okay? So now let's roll back this change. How do we do it? Exactly from the point that where we were, in the commit manager. We have here a button which says load and save. We click, and here we can see all the rollbacks and all the commits that were done we, from all the users. You can see here all were done uh, by the admin and for all the northbound interfaces that NSO has. It can be web UI, CLI, REST. It will show everything here. So I will choose the last one. I will click on Load. And you can see already what, what is happening. We will delete exactly the, co the configuration change that we just performed. And we will be go back to the previous one. 
as simple as choosing the commit, clicking in, in yes, and if we go back to the device, I do the show run, and you can see that we are back on the main configuration. Okay, So this is good to perform some manual changes that we need in our network, but what about 10 lines, 100 lines of configuration that you want to do? What about if you want to onboard a new device and you want to apply a template? How this can be done in NSO. So let's come here to the beginning. And now I will show you with the, the previous configuration editor so you can notice some changes as well. So we go to the configuration editor where we can see all the nets and the services that we have installed. I will go into this after. And to apply some templates, we need to go to the module NCS devices. Going to this module, we will see that we have created two templates. ACL default, which will apply one, some ACL configurations to the device, and set VDP domain, which I will go into it after. If we scroll down, we will find our devices. Okay, For example, iOS CLI 0. And once the device is open, if we scroll down, you will see here a button which says Apply Template. In the new configuration editor, you will see here some buttons on the top. And there is one that says Actions. In the Actions is where all these, these buttons reside now. So we click on Apply Template. And I will choose ACL default. You see here the green bar. It means that there are changes happening. We scroll down, run Apply Template. And you can see here, iOS CLI 0, result OK. And we have here the S3's commit manager. So if we go there, we can see that with just these clicks, our template was applied to this device with all this ACL. And if we go to the native config, we can see the time that we saved already. <laughs> right? So if we click commit, all of this was submitted. And now you tell me, OK. We already know how to configure, apply templates, but what about if we have a group of devices and I want to apply uh, some lines to all of my infra? How do we do it? Using device groups. So going back here to the configuration editor, we go to the NCS devices, and you saw that we have here three device groups. We have the iOS XR devices, which have all four iOS XR devices that we have in our infra. We have the group of iOS CLI devices, which shows the, the only iOS CLI device that we have. And we have all devices, which contains both groups and contains all the members, which means that is all the devices that we have in both groups, right? So if I want to apply a configuration to all of these devices, I have to create a template before, which you have in the workbook, a step-by-step -step how to do it. And we go here to the apply templates. I will choose here the set VTP domain, which will make a change in all the devices regarding VTP and domain. I will say run. I can see that it, the message is OK for all the devices that we have in the groups. And if we go to the COVID commit manager, we can easily see that all the devices, the five devices that belong to the two groups, will receive these three lines of, of configuration. It can be three, it can be 10, it can be 100. I just showed three because it's easy for me to put something on the screen that you can see. So if we click Commit, we wait a little bit, and so we'll connect to all the devices, push all the configurations, and it's done. Okay. So if we go back to our device and we do the show run, if I type the command correctly, you will see that now it has the VTP configuration that we set up in the template and the domain configurations that we pushed. Okay. As easy as this. But now we have a problem. Imagine that someone with these templates delete the configuration of the VTP or change it. So with these templates, it's not easy to detect that. We can do it with compliance reports. But it's not easy to roll back to the configuration that we had uh, deployed in the template. So for that, NSO has a feature that is so important that is even embed in the solution name which is the services. Because NSO is Network Service Orchestrator, I will show you now the powerful uh, of the services. So if we go to the device man the service manager, sorry, we, we select a service point. In this case, you have here the NTP, which will deploy, of course, NTP configurations in our network. Okay. So to start, I create um, a service instance. I will just say NTP. 
and I will fill out the fields of the mandatory uh, fields that I defined in my Yang model. Okay, so I will say peer address 2244162233. So now we can see here that we have our service instance. It has zero devices at the moment. And now, we do, if we enter and we go to the edit config, we can see all the fields that will be configured that are mapped in our Yang model. We have the peer address, server address that are both mandatory. And we have the min pool and max pool that have default values. If I add here some devices, for example, iOS XR0, I will add all the iOS XRs. This can change on on the Yang model and on the XML. So you can define this by device groups. In this case, I did it by device by device. So with this, this change, we go to the commit manager, and we can see nothing different until now from the templates. So they will be applied with all the configurations that we set up in the service. So I do the commit. And now is where we will see the big differences. Because in the service manager, we can now do a check sync and see if the, these configurations that we applied are still there. Imagine the ACL use case. You apply an ACL and someone deletes it. If you are applying that ACL, it's because you want to prevent some hole in your network, right? So it, you want to be sure that, that that ACL is there all the time. So let me show you how exactly this happens. If I go to the iOS XR0, for example, always the chosen one, I go to the config, I go to the NTP configuration that we deployed, and I will uh, delete it by mistake. So I delete, I go to the configuration editor, I think I'm not doing anything that is harmful. And now in the service manager, if you do a check sync, you can easily see that there is an issue. Because the service that we deployed is not in sync anymore. It means that something is missing in the device that we applied the service. What is missing? We click on redeploy dry run. And we will see that is the peer address that we just deleted, or someone just deleted by mistake. And now, this is, here it comes the powerful way of the services, because we can just, with one click, click on redeploy, and our service is in sync again. So if I go now to the iOS XR0, I go to the configuration, config, NTP, that you see that the peer address that we deleted before is there again. Is there again here? Is there again on the device? Is full on track with, and the configuration is all there. So now, and here we come to the last part of the presentation. I will show you how to create these rollbacks, uh, ro uh, role based access control rules. Sorry. So if we go to the configuration editor, we have here a lot of modules. And we have here the AAA module, OK? In the AAA module, we go to the authentication, users, and we are able to see all the users that are, connect, that are able to access NSO. Here, I created the read user, which will be like our monitoring user, someone that we just want to have like read access inside NSO. So to define the rules, we need to go to the module, which is named NACM. Okay? If we click in an NACM, we have here the rule list that we have in NSO, and we have the groups. If we click on the, rule, the groups, we have here the read group that I already created with all the read users that I want these rules to be applied on, because these rules are always applied to groups. So if, imagine if you have an entire monitoring team, you want to add all here, and all the rules that you define will be for all these group users. Okay. So if we go back, we have this rule list, OK? In this rule list, if I come here, we now have this group associated, the read group. And now we have options to create CMD rules, which are more related to the system. And now we have the rules, OK? We will go for a rule. And I will say, allow read only. And the action that I will say is deny, OK? If I enter in this rule, I, am here, I have here a lot of input options, but I will focus on the ones that we need for now. Access operations. So if we click on this info uh, button, we can see already what are the action operations that NSO allows. Execution, delete, update, read, and create of elements. So I want to grab all of these, and I will put them here. And I will say that I will deny the execution, the deletes, 
the update and the create of any element by these users, OK? And now we need to provide a path. How, what is this path, and what, how, how do we generate them? In NSO6, you have a very good way to do it and easy. You go to the device manager. For example, you go to the iOS XR0. And now we have something here called widgets on the top right. In these widgets, we can extract the equivalent of the configuration in, for example, XML, or we can do it for the XPath. Okay? This XPath is exactly what we need to create these rules. Because we rely on young models in these nets, I can just say, for example, imagine I want these users to don't have access to the iOS XR0. I do my path until here. If I don't want them to have access to until the domain, or in anything after, I do. I provide this path because I want every device. I will just provide this small path. So if I go to the NACM read rule, I go to the edit config in the data node. I will provide exactly this path. I commit, and now the commit is done. I go to the read user and see if this is working. So going to the read user, device manager. If I open the iOS XR0 device, I try to edit config, and you see already the difference. You see that all the inputs are only allowed for read. They are blocked for this user. Okay? Even if sometimes you see some buttons that, says that, you, that give you the, the idea that you can make changes, you click, and you will see access denied. Okay? So this was everything that I had for today. WebUI, I know, is much, much uh, longer, and there is m much more to explore. If you want to know more about it, let's schedule a one-on-one -on -one Meet the Engineer. I'll be more than happy to show you. But in the meantime, thank you for coming. And uh, in this uh, QR code, you will find a workbook on how to navigate as well from the WebUI, how to create these services, templates, step-by-step, -step, uh, and it's everything for today. Thank you for coming, and that's it. <laughs>